and welcome to Build Series Live from London. We've got two very special guests with us today, uh, Dr. Zand and Chris Van Tulliken. Make some noise! <laughs> How are you guys? Uh, we're doing very well, I think. Are we, are we doing well? Yeah, very well. You look very well. I did that sound like I mean, a I, I, I think uh, uh, we took that question. I think yeah. if you're a doctor, you're like, by well, what do you oh, mean? I see. Yeah, yeah, we yeah haven't, exactly. I haven't had a scan today or any blood <laughs> tests, so I can't, I can't give you an honest answer. But. I'm afebrile, and uh, you know, you know, observations are normal. Brilliant. I don't know what afebrile means, but I don't I'm have assuming. A fever. Okay, fine. You don't have a fever, right? Good. <laughs> um, it just sounds like you're very flexible or something. Um, so, first things first, guys. How did you two meet? That's, that's <laughs> great. So, um, you're that's identical good, twins, guys. That's such a lovely question. We, Thank you. If you're twins, you get asked the same nonsense. All the, do you share a birthday? Oh. Do you share a girlfriend? Hang on. Uh, it just goes on. Yeah, yeah. It's right. Off, of course. We're gonna off. have to. But we've never had. How, do you, how did you meet? Which is lovely. Yeah. Do you remember? Do you remember meeting me? Well, it was more like when did we split apart? Would be a more yeah. relevant question. At about Ooh, the nice. eight, about the eight cell stage, we became two people rather than one. When two, be when one the big comes two. Yeah, exactly. um, that's that's it's. it's I mean, R and B R and B singers doing yeah. uh, embryology. Great. I mean, so so is that even? We're going deep straight away. Yeah. But is that was that maybe part of the reason why you two went into medicine in the first place? Because you were kind of acutely aware from an early age that you are in some ways medical miracles, just walking around. <laughs> Freaks is the word you're grasping I, I around for. I was going to say for. febrile, actually. <laughs> I can see it written there. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yes, I think so. We're, we're human clones. Uh, <laughs> that's not funny. That's just what we are. Um, and I think so. As a result of that, your life is a big nature nurture experiment. To what extent can I drag myself away from the horror show that is looking at him every day and become a, a better, different person. Well, you've really lost the That's crowd really there, sweet. Chris. That's really bad. That's really sweet. We're going to come on I to your competitiveness, but I do, I do need to say, um, if anybody has any questions uh, for either of the guys, we'll probably both answer them, uh, get them in on Twitter, at Build Series London, or on Facebook. Just put them in the comments below. Um, so we just got a glimpse of your perhaps competitive nature there. Uh, actually, no, I was just being facetious. We're not yeah, in any way... Rude. Oh, I was right. being rude. We're not in any way being competitive. It's, Is that... it's ridiculous to compete with your identical twin brother because even if you win, you won't win by much and no one cares. No one will remember that I'm the better or worse twin. Right. Well, I mean, it's funny you say that because on your own website, um, it, on Chris's page, it says uh, that you're twice the man Zand is. But then on Zahn's page, it says, yeah, Chris is twice the man I am. So... Yeah, bizarrely, I wrote that. I don't know why. I, I think it was a joke about my weight. It was an attempt at self-deprecating humour, which well, I now feel full, full and flat. I haven't looked at that website in quite a long time. Do we have a website? <laughs> do. We do. It's, it's really nice. Very nice about you. You should have two identical websites. That would be um, <laughs> actually... it's pointless, but why not? Um, you, uh, but I, I thought maybe it was some like science joke, like one at the one that came out first is sort of somehow twice something to do with. Chromosomes, I don't know. I, I rem <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's I the significant it's... weight differential that existed for a long time between us. Right. Yeah, I, I gained a lot. I moved to America and lived above a, a hamburger restaurant Americans. called right. Bartley's Burgers, which um, claimed at the time to be the best burger restaurant on the eastern seaboard, and I, I put that to the test. and got I got myself to 19 stone, which which for a six-foot guy is big. I was, I was very big. And uh, and maybe it was... I don't know about the website. I honest, I've made that... We decided we had to have a website, and I was tasked with doing it, and I made it in an afternoon and have not revisited it since. But you prompted me to go and have a look at well, it. Well, look, it's, it still looks good. It's uh, mobile-optimised. Um, <laughs> great work. Amazing. Great work. Oh, well done, me. <laughs> yeah, brilliant stuff. Um, we're not just here to talk about the fact that you're twins, because... <laughs> Like you say, you probably get that a lot. Yeah. Um, we're, we're more here to talk about your show, Operation Ouch. There it is. A little yes from the crowd. There it is, Operation Ouch. Now, we're going to get onto the live, sh the fact you're doing a live show, but the live show you're doing is of Operation Ouch, the CBBC show, which has been a huge success to the point where you're about to start your seventh series and you've won two BAFTAs. We've got, we've got two BAFTAs. Got we a have, couple um, of BAFTAs. We have not... Round of applause! Well, hold on. Oh. Hold on. Because... Is it just one BAFTA? But the no, the show won two BAFTAs, but Zahn and I have been nominated for Best Presenter four times and won 
Never. Really? This, it's coming up, the fourth loss is coming up this Sunday. Yeah, that's right, that's right. So, um, is, it TV, yeah. is it this Sunday, the TV BAFTAs? Children's BAFTAs. Children's, children's, children's BAFTAs. Children's, 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 children's still BAFTAs. You've got to mumble oh, yeah, the yeah, children's. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. the BAFTAs children's. Yeah. Um, so we do, but yeah, the show has been, it, it is extraordinary. I think when we started making it, we, would, we had absolutely no idea what it would be. We'd done no children's television before, and we didn't have any kind of personas through it. We were just muddling through explaining some science. And now it is, uh, it's one of the most popular things on, on kids' television, which is a big, a big credit to, we've got a big team working on it, um, but it is extraordinary to, to be doing a show yeah. that, that I guess is the show we would have wanted to watch when we were kids. Yeah, and well, actually, it's, it's a show that I watch, I enjoy watching now. Should we take a look? <laughs> Very good. Fun and a bit gross. It's were they, was that, that, that wasn't a gammon, was it? Were those real lungs? No, those are real, we used the real animal body parts, um, which comes from our childhood. Our dad used to take us to the butcher shop, which he called the dead pet shop. <laughs> and um, he, he did. And uh, he would buy us um, weird body parts like chicken's feet and oh, hearts. Wow. And this and is just one of the reasons you're both vegetarian. We, he, we, uh, weirdly, we kind of eat it all, but the idea was we could, so he would reanimate the, uh, you, if you get a chicken's foot and pull on the tendons, you can make the claws clench um, if you get a heart and fill it with water under the sink and squeeze it it will pump still work as a pump great and, um, so all that stuff we've nicked and put in the show yeah I mean <clears throat> I'm quite squeamish yeah. and even in the episodes I've seen when you do the diagrams like the one you did of the the first world war stuff oh yeah you just had like a diagram very basic sort of line drawing of a broken leg yeah I can't handle it <clears throat> couldn't handle that <clears throat> It's very hard. It's increasingly hard for us to watch. It is quite a gross show. Yeah. But we think it, it, it. Every time we speak to kids, they want it to be more revealing. Provided it's not gratuitous. You mm. know, if we if there's an injury, we will show. It. We've shown bone poking through skin and oh, really lacerations. And yeah, no. My goodness. Brain some, surgery. Some of it's right. Some of it is very hard to watch. But what I think the nicest compliments we get about the show are from doctors and nurses who say the kids that watch your show are better patients. They're easier to treat because they're more relaxed in hospital, because they've seen needles going in and they've seen bone wires yes. going in and screws and hammering and all this kind of... Screws and hammering. There. Like the orthopedic stuff, or oh, some of that is... Yeah, you know. extreme stuff. So do you, do you, what do you think is the key to its success? Why do you think it's done so well? Do you think it's partly that, the fact that you're not afraid to shy away from showing some stuff that kind of takes people by surprise? No. You, okay. No, you go. No, you you go. I, I would say. I mean, you, Chris may have a different answer. I would say part of the success is that it is not a patronising show at all. That we basically aim for about first year medical school in terms of the quality of the science. Like we really, really put it up there, and kids are happy to learn. Kids are happy to keep watching. So we get more science on CBBC than we do on for the grown up telly that we make, and I think that that sucks you in. Uh, and I think the other thing is it's not preaching. It's very little eat your greens. It's more about let's celebrate the human body. Let's meet some amazing patients, some extraordinary scientists and clinicians. And through that, you can just enjoy it and have fun. And we're not telling anyone really how to live their lives. Yeah, because kids hate that. I think they do, or at least they get enough of it. Yeah. That we, the show, I think in every bit that we film... You're trying to make it, the first job is to make it entertaining, maybe to make it funny, at least to make it interesting, then to get in something educational, then to reassure them. But at no point do we say, this is what you should do. Mm. Al we almost never do that. <laughs> and yet I think that probably allows them to have a good take home from it. Definitely. And, and how are you going to transpose this amazing show, which it's one thing filming these things and filming operations and... How are you going to do this in a live theatre? It's such. I mean, we've we, we've talked about this before, and I I've, I don't have a good answer for that, except that somehow we have managed. It's just the two of us on stage for about an hour and a quarter, but somehow it feels like Operation Ouch. We've got experiments, we've got body parts on stage, we've got the world's biggest snot collection. Oh, we do God. a big <laughs> virus. It's really. I mean, that bit is particularly why, disgusting. Why, sorry, why? Why have you got the world's biggest snot collection and wh whose nose did this come out of? I feel like any committed fan just wants to see as much snot as they can. Fan of what? It's my snot. <laughs> it's my snot. Is um, it actually your snot? Have you actually been collecting your snot? We can't reveal all the trade, trade secrets, um, but we've got a variety of different kinds of snot right. that demonstrate different things. So Chris gives a bit of a, bit of a seminar on... But the, the, the stage show as well is more... One of the maybe the nice things about Operation Ouch is we're brothers, so we can do 
more extreme things to each other than just friends or presenters can do. Yeah. So we've got an endoscope. We're going to look inside Zahn's head. You're going to get views of Zahn's head that you've never seen before. Um, and there's quite a lot of personal stuff. An in endoscope show. being one of the things that's sort of fiber, <laughs> fiber optic. optic camera. So we're looking into his head. In, inside Which his bit head. Which bit is it through well, the nose? In, through several different. His nose orifices. has got a lot of snot in it. Nose, so gonna get ears, <laughs> back of the mouth. Yeah, we have we have a good look inside Zahn's. Wow. So and then we're going to release a, a virus into the audience and then treat them all. So it's quite interactive, but there's a lot of personal stuff about our own childhoods. We look at some of Zan's old school reports. My least um, favorite part of the show. Put up a few, a few weird pictures. So it's, there's a personal element that you don't ever quite get on the telly show. And you, you mentioned you're doing some experiments and some interactive stuff. Am I right in thinking that there's something you could maybe do with us now? There was the yeah, we've something got to do a sort of we've got we've got a little I mean this is we're not going to get out some um, cow lungs we, ah. we talked about our, okay our, put the cow lungs away though <laughs> <laughs> we talked about our dad earlier so dad had a number of weird tricks that he would like to do and one of his things was if he was out of the house or he came back to the car and he he'd, let, he'd often just leave us alone in the car wouldn't he so he it's had a weird secret now. You're not men to do that now I mean you, I, I know now yeah. arrested it's for that. as long as you crack a window so fine. he would leave no he would say do all the windows up lock the doors and don't let anyone into the car and then he just leave his three kids in the car while he went shopping, which always seemed safe, but he had this, he'd secret say, signal. there are kidnappers, so don't let the kidnappers take you, and here's the secret signal. Do the secret signal. So okay. it's really easy. All you have to do is spin your thumb in opposite directions. Like play along, guys. Play, play along at home. Like, not like that. They've got to go in opposite directions. Um, okay. I don't hang on. You've got to talk into the microphone, Chris. So, uh, sorry. It, well, you've got to explain. Okay, so what you've got to do is move your thumbs in opposite directions. So normally twiddling your thumbs, they're both going in the same direction. You've got to get one, oh. thumb, going, one thumb going oh. forwards and one thumb going backwards. Are we doing it? Hang on. No. Is it impossible? It's fairly difficult. That's why it's a good secret code. So we've then taken this to the next level for the stage show. So try, try this one, Will. This is, this is, a, slightly, um, this is a slightly harder one. H harder than the one I couldn't do. That's fine. Chris, you talk and I'll do. Okay, Zahn, I want you to put your right thumb up and point at your right thumb with your left first finger. Okay? You can do that. Nice and easy. Now, put your right thumb down, put your left thumb up and point at your left thumb with your right first finger. Have you got that? Good. Now just swap them backwards and forwards as fast as you can. So look at Zand. I'll show you. <laughs> just like this, okay? Oh. Will, you're actually doing an amazingly good job there. I have to say, that was no, very impressive. No, it wasn't. I'm... Is everyone doing it? It's... If, you, if you're do tweeting, then... It's, is that all right? No. 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 no Why are you doing all I, the twisting to, stuff? So you're like holding it upside it down. Yeah. You're like. <laughs> so what, what? What's that teaching so us? So what we see is that if we make a coordinated movement on both sides, so Zan, just wiggle both. Uh, come on, don't drink. Wiggle, <laughs> wiggle both thumbs up and down. Okay, you can do that very quickly. Yeah. Because it's economical for your brain to make symmetrical movements. Now point your fingers equally on both sides. You can do that quickly. But if we discoordinate both sides of the body, what we know from scanning the brain <laughs> is the brain uses huge amounts more energy and oxygen. So it's really hard to do that. And if we look at people who are professionally discoordinated, drummers, and the like. drummers yeah. or pianists, or uh, most musicians can discoordinate their hands, what they've done is build a much bigger broadband connection, a much bigger cable dimension between the two different halves of their brain, and they can then be as economical as if they were symmetrical. So we've got nice, lots of nice little body tricks where we can learn about neuroscience just simply by trying to do something as simple as swapping your fingers and thumbs around. And if I was to do that every day, train myself, just doing that, take 10 about, minutes a day, I'd get these... Take about four years. Take about four years, to, and, then, and then eventually... You'd have a thicker corpus callosum. <laughs> That's what everyone wants. <laughs> it's 10 minutes a day. When it comes to the corpus callosum, size matters. That's I can't think of a there. better use of your time. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks very much. Um, well, look, I think it's, it's obviously going to be a lot of fun, um, and you're going to be in there for a month... We're with there it. from the 6th of December to the 6th of January. It's on the Apollo Theatre on Shaftesbury Avenue. And this is, um, this is a variant of a show that we took all around Australia last year. And we've, we've I think we've done it. We, we're doing it a little bit better. There are a few tweaks for London. So we, we performed it in the Sydney Opera House. We sold out the Sydney Opera House a, bu a bunch of times. And that at the time seemed nerve-wracking. But it is much, much more terrifying to come to the West End. We grew up in London. Mm. And you've got a home crowd. There'd be friends and family or people we know or know of in the audience every night. And, and I think I, we feel much, much more pressure to do a good job in London. And you've got a whole month as well. Got a whole month, so... It, it, <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. 
Th thanks for reminding just, us. Of just that. to, <laughs> that's a lot of seats to sell. It's a lot of people. Um, so I think we're, do, we're doing all right, actually. I mean, the, the, the tickets have sold very well. It's amazing. I think whenever you do a thing like this, you go, is anyone going to show up? Why would anyone want to see us plonkers doing this stuff? But actually, um, the tickets are going well. But there are still some available if people want them. Okay, good. And it's not the only show you're doing there, though, because you figured whilst you're there, something for the, something for the mums and dads, something for the grown ups as well. Which brings us nicely on to your other one night only show. Tell us a little bit about find love, lose weight, and live forever without really trying. I think every time you open a newspaper or you go to the internet and try and look up how to live, you get this unbelievable load of confusing, contradictory advice. Is red wine good for you or is it bad for you? Is coconut oil good for you or bad for you? A goji berry is important. And so, what we know is that the only person who can really alter your life expectancy is you, and yet there's never been a more confusing time to do it. So the show is, clearly, we've kind of made this big promise in the title that we're probably going to fail to deliver on, but those are the great Don't challenges. Don't admit that. That's why that people all, are going to be going. Yeah, people are going to come. No, we're going to give you the secret to eternal life. That's what well, we're going to do. Well, because that is that genuinely is, is my next question, yes. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> okay, okay, well, I'll, I guess I'll no get another spoilers. shot at it yeah. for the next question. But, but what we want to do is kind of go through all the kind of weird health advice and confusing ideas and try and tidy it up a bit. And it's a fun, it's a fun show. Um, we're looking back at lots of the programs and documentaries we've made and lots mm. of the stuff we've done. And what is the secret? <laughs> <laughs> Chris. Can we give a few spoilers? We're gonna, I guess I'm gonna talk about uh, some of the programs I've made on adult television about over treatment of certain conditions. So yeah. how it's possible to treat a lot of uh, our most common medical conditions conditions without using lots of pills and other things you can do and I think we're going to explore in more detail than we managed to on television what are the barriers to some extent people do know how to lose weight and do exercise but they usually find themselves unable to do it mm. so we're going to try and um, break down some of those barriers and help people actually get out of the house and do stuff but what about the living forever bit we you've got to come to the show we can't give it all away yeah Really? And we're going to talk a lot about things. <laughs> well, it's like, re yeah. really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but the, I mean, it's, it's funny, though, because this uh, j just recently, I was uh, just hanging out with a friend, and she put a song on. She was like, ah, if I die, this is a song I want played at my funeral. And Whoa. I was like, hang on a second. Say that again. She's like, well, if I, if I die? I said, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Death yeah. and taxes, mate. Yeah. It, it's not if I die. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to die. And she was like, oh, I'd never really thought like that. And she was like... Why? She's like, I'm, she's like, you know, people get living longer and longer. I'm like early 30s. By the time I'm, you know, 80, 90, her granny lived to like 99. She's like, by the time I'm like 80, maybe people won't die anymore. Maybe they won't. And that this, this feels like there's some logic in that. I guess I... <laughs> Don't, don't it's hard, tell to, me know, she's it's hard to know where to begin. I mean, yeah. I think <laughs> the science of longevity and age aging is improving all the time, but, but there is, I think, very good reason to think that we will never be able to extend our lifespan uh, infinitely. Yeah, infinitely. And nor would we want There's to. the spoiler, guys. <laughs> it's, There's you know the spoiler. That, like, dance like nobody's watching, all that kind of stuff. Don't live like you're going to live forever. That's not a good mantra. Right. Because then you just kick stuff down the road. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess you would have a pension. That would be the what Save as if you're going to live forever, but... That's the only thing. It's not a good mantra. <laughs> so, so you can, but but <laughs> it's just the accept worst the fact. Motivational poster. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like a picture of a sunset. Don't forget your pension. You might live forever. Yeah. But you probably won't. So. But probably not. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, look, that's a shame. I'll, I'll tell her. I'll tell her that according to the doctors, you, you are in fact going to die. I mean, there are things she can do. So um, if you want to halve your risk of death in any given year, if you're ticking along like a lot of British adults at a thousand steps a day, so you are sitting in your desk bound most of the day, you're not walking much, you drive to and from work, if you can get yourself to 10,000 steps a day, you, have you heard that number, that yeah, kind of yeah, magic yeah. number, 10,000 steps a day? So that comes from a Tasmanian study that was really beautifully designed, followed people for a long time. And ten, going from 1,000 to 10,000 a day cuts your risk of dying in any year by 50%. Now, that's not bad for a kind of trick to live forever. Because you'd think that... Free and easy. Yeah. But you'd think that you, the more you walk, you know... You wear, wear yourself the out. The more roads you're crossing. Yeah. You know, yeah. The, the, if you about the chance of dying in any given year, <laughs> stay in, very safe room, no well, sharp objects... 
I guess yeah, people can decide for themselves who they're going to Do two experiments. You two should do two experiments. One of you stays in. <laughs> One of us is like, stays yeah, inside. Yeah. Stay safe. Yeah. Um, no, we actually... So what you can control for all of that, so you can look at pedestrians killed per mile, um, even if you are walking down a street in Delhi on the most polluted day of the year in that city, which is probably the most polluted in the world, um, you will still be doing yourself more good than staying at home. Well, look, and it's good no matter what else. The other thing is, if you're walking down the street, smoking a cigarette and eating a cream bun, that is still, which maybe that's what you want to do, that is doing you more good than sitting at home doing those things. So don't let yourself off the hook. If you want the cigarette and the bun, I wouldn't recommend it. But if you're going to do it, go for a walk while you do it. Well, there we go. Look, I think we've got our answer because I'm extrapolating. You said you're going to reduce your chance of dying in any given year. Yeah. So just always do 10,000 steps a day and you will... Live forever. Live forever. Thank you very much for joining us, guys. Please make <laughs> some pleasure. noise for Dr. Chris and Dr. Zand. Um, and thank you for joining us as well. I hope you've enjoyed it. We'll be back for more excellent builds uh, tomorrow. And make sure you get some tickets to go and see Operation Ouch live at the Apollo in London uh, on Shaftesbury Avenue. Shaftesbury the Apollo Avenue, Theatre. Apollo. Exactly that one from the 6th of December. Brilliant. Thanks what a long so outro. We'll see you soon.